Hello everyone and welcome to the Adam Kiss Show. Today I'm delighted to talk about Ben-Hur, one of my favorite epic movies, one of my favorite movies in general. It was from 1959 I believe was when it was released, starring Charlton Heston, directed by the great William Wyler. Uh, now it's a very big subject, it's a huge long movie, it's an incredible movie with an incredible story, and uh, there's really so much I get to dig into in this review, so I really can't wait. But before I do that, take a moment, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. Share this video with anybody, and uh, give us a comment below what other videos you'd like me to do. All right, without further ado, let's get into Ben-Hur. So Ben-Hur was always one of my favorite movies growing up. I always remember thinking that it was so similar to The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, and like The Count of Monte Cristo, it was a book, a very, a very well-selling book. I mean, it was a bestseller, I believe. In the United States, I believe it was rivaled only by the Bible in terms of sales, when it was published at least. Um, it really, people don't remember the book today. Now everyone remembers the movie, but there was also uh, a movie version from the 1920s which I have actually seen. And the interesting thing about that is the chariot race in that in that old movie is really incredibly thrilling. I mean, the the in the 1959 version, there's also incredible cinematography. And it's an incredibly shot chase. I mean, an incredibly shot race. But I mean, the the silent version is also much better than than you would think. Uh, but I digress. So in the 1959 version of Ben Hur, it's starring Charlton Heston, as I mentioned, directed by William Wyler. Um, I believe that Kirk Douglas also campaigned for the role, but ended up losing the role to Heston. Um, so several people were, were offered or auditioned for the role, uh, both of uh, Judah, uh, which is Charlton Heston's character, and Masala, uh, the, the other kind of villain character in the film. Uh, but I, before I go any further, I suppose I should elaborate a little bit on the plot. So the plot is very similar to The Count of Monte Cristo. Um, essentially, it's about Judah Ben-Hur, that's his name, He's a prince in modern day Israel, and uh, they're occupied by the Romans. The whole story is that he formed a friendship with uh, the son of a governor, um, Masala, when they were kids. Uh, they played together, they had a great friendship, and then he went away. Uh, he kind of rose in the ranks to become a uh, higher up in the Roman army, and now Masala's returning, but he's a changed man, he's more ruthless. Um, and then, you know, he asks Judah to help him put down rebellions, put down dissent among his fellow Israelites. He says, no, I can't do that. There's kind of a rift. And then because of an accident of a, something falling off of his roof onto the, the new governor's uh, parade of entering the city, uh, he's arrested, he's put in jail. Masala is being very ruthless with him. He sentences, sentences him to the galleys. Uh, and then he manages, I won't give any more spoilers, but he manages to return uh, much wealthier and kind of challenge Masala and try to find his family again and all of that. So again, it's it's about revenge, essentially. It's about um, how damaging revenge can be to everyone involved. It's about, you know, all of those deep themes of humanity. It's about love, kindness, uh, hate, what that does to you. Uh, Jesus also makes an appearance. You never see his face in the movie, but he makes an appearance in, in the movie. You can see the back of his head. So again, it's it's all during that time period. And it's really just an incredible film. The only way I could describe it is epic. It's really, um, you don't see movies like this being made anymore. Uh, all those thousands of extras, those huge sets they had to build uh, without CGI. I mean, it's really incredible what they were able to do. The movie was shot on location in uh, at the studios in Rome, I believe, at least a good portion of it was. And it took a while to film. I mean, it's, it's a very long movie. Um, I remember there's one anecdote that um, Charlton Heston told in, in interviews that kind of halfway through the movie, the director, William Wyler, came to him and said, you know, you just have to be better in this movie. And, and Charlton Heston asked, asked, what do you mean? And he just said, well, I don't really know what to say. You just have to be better. Um, so, I mean, that, that's kind of one scenario of, of an interesting direction to get. You know, sometimes um, as an actor, that can be hard to get. Just like, I guess, try something new, do something else, things like that. But again, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I think it's an incredible movie. I think it's great performances all around. Um, 
Really, uh, there's a lot of smaller characters who also steal the show, in addition to Charlton Heston, who definitely I'm a, I'm a big fan of his work in, in films. He, he, uh, it's hard to imagine him in, in regular pieces. I mean, I know he did movies like Touch of Evil and things like that, but most of his characters, great characters that he's remembered for, are these great larger-than-life historical epic characters, you know, uh, whether it's Ben-Hur, um, whether, I mean... He did a lot of movies, not just in Roman epics, but he did a lot of, you know, historical movies like the the Warlord is one that's one of his lesser known movies. He did movies like El Cid. Uh, again, he he was really at home in the epics. I mean, if Cary Grant was the king of romantic comedies, then Charlton Heston was the king of historical epics. Um, definitely, he always got the first pick of all the historical epic scripts going around Hollywood. And you know, honestly, th those started to go out of favor. You know, in, in the 60s, by the mid-60s or so, they were really starting to get out of favor. And uh, that's kind of, I mean, his his main period when Charlton Heston was very active was, you know, from around 1950 or so to about 1965, I would say. And he's known, obviously, a lot later, he went into more science fiction as that started to become more and more popular. But, you know, the epics, you know, I believe his first uh, big epics were um, The Ten Commandments as Moses. And before that, he did The Greatest Show on Earth, which is about the circus, but in a way, that's also an epic. So again, um, he did a lot of those big epics. I'm a big fan of it. I think that this story is great. I mean, I always love the whole theme of The Count of Monte Cristo, those kind of movies. Um, it spans several years. It spans, you know, a lot of characters. A lot of things happen. And it's just a Roman, good old-fashioned Roman epic. I mean, what's better than that? I would love to do a Roman epic someday, just putting that out into the universe. Uh, as a filmmaker, as a director, as an actor, as a writer, I would absolutely love to do a Roman epic. Um, it's definitely one of those genres that I think um, it's not done enough these days. It's I wish it would be more popular. It's I mean, kind of like uh, a Western movie, for example. Those aren't as popular today. Same thing with Roman epics. I feel like those had their day, you know, in the 60s, the late 50s, whenever it was. And obviously they've had resurgences since then. I mean, in terms of Roman epics, they've done movies like Gladiator, which was around 2000. So it, it does happen. Uh, I just feel, wish they would happen more. Obviously, one consideration is these big budgets you have to have for them, all the period costumes, all the period sets, things like that. So it's a big event to make one, but I think they're definitely worth it. So those are my thoughts on Ben-Hur. Before you leave, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification, share, like, and comment below what other videos you'd like me to do. That's all, folks.